ever. For we've been bought with a price. The Holy Spirit has made known to us who we are, and he's made us a part of the body. Do you remember the day you got saved? I remember so clearly as if it were now how that the Holy Ghost would come to my heart. I'd sit in a service like this and the preacher would preach and he'd point his finger. It wasn't anybody else in the church but me. He told me how sorry I was, how mean I was, how low down I was, how sinful I was. And it was as if there was nobody else in the place. And I'd sit there and my heart would pound and I, my pulse would race. And at the invitation time, there'd be a lump crawl up in my throat. I couldn't swallow it. Big as a baseball, I thought I'd choke to death. What did anything except God telling me that he loved me and he wanted to save me? But I remember that glad day when I said, Lord, here I come. And when I came, he stood with open arms to receive me and he does everybody that comes unto him and all who come unto him, he says he will in no wise cast them out. And I just bless God that uh, as he sought her and he bought her and he brought her, one blessed day God sought me, he bought me and he's going to bring me unto himself. Amen. Well, let me hurry. Notice the presentation of the proposal. It was a prayerful presentation. He made it very prayerfully. He said, Lord, here's what I want you to do. I heard about an old boy that was single and he wanted to be married. He lived on a farm and he run a, an ad in one of these newspapers, one of these, uh, what do you call them things? What? Who? Mail order bride, that, that works for me. I mean, if that's what, but anyhow, one of those ads in one of those things that said, farmer with 400 acre farm desires a wife with a tractor. <laughs> Send picture of tractor. <laughs> here, here is one. He is, says, I, I'm solder. It was a prayerful presentation. He made a gift or a promise uh, as he put it on her, even as the Holy Spirit seals us. Verse 14 gives us the prayer. Verse 15 gives the answer. Please look at verse 15. He says, And it came to pass, behold, uh, or before he had done speaking, that behold, Rebekah came out, who was born of Bethuel, son of Milcah, the wife of Nahor, Abraham's brother, and her pitcher was on her shoulder. While he was yet speaking. Now, folks, I want you to know God answers prayers in a lot of ways. Sometimes God says, wait a while. Sometimes God says, no. But then there are those times that while we're yet speaking, God will answer our prayer. Isaiah 65, 24 says, And it shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. And while they are yet speaking, I will hear. Isn't it great? Have you ever been to that place that, that you really needed something and felt like you ought to pray about it? And even before you could start praying about it, God just took care of your need and provided for it. But have you ever been in that place where you just knew that if God didn't come through, you were in a mess and there was no way out? You got down on your knees and started praying. And while you're still praying, God just showed up and sent you your answer. I've seen that so many times in my life. And I want to tell you one thing that God has taught me there, by the way. You'll never know the power of God. You'll never know the wonder of the Spirit until you get in a place that you can't provide for yourself. And unless God comes through, you are in a mess. If you don't get into a corner with God where you can't get out and put God on notice and put the world on notice that God's on your side, you'll never know the power of God. Let me show you what I mean. It was on a Wednesday night here in this church. It was a drought time. The farmer's crops were drying up. And, uh, and we have prayers. We always do on Wednesday night and had men praying. And God said to my heart, pray for rain. I said, God, one of these other men will pray for rain. I, there's no need for me to pray. And man, those two men came and prayed, and they prayed all around the world. But they didn't mention clouds nor anything about rain. God said, pray for rain. I said, God, but it's a drought. He said, I know it. Pray for rain. I got up and I said, folks, God told me to pray for rain. And I started praying. My heart was beating and I didn't know in the world. I, I mean, it was, I, I was putting my reputation as pastor on the line. I was asking God for rain in the middle of a drought. And I got to bragging on God. I got to talking about what he had done in the Bible, how he had divided the waters and how he had sent rain and all those other things that he had done in miracle form. By the time I got through, son, I was waiting for the rain. One of my wife and one of the other ladies said that while I was praying, it thundered. Now, I didn't hear the thunder. 
But I want you to know I heard the pounding of God in my soul while I was praying. Went home, went to bed, it didn't rain. Next morning, 5 o'clock, my telephone rang. A man voice on the other end said, Preacher, are you up? I said, I am now. <laughs> he said, have you been outside? Not yet. He hollered, it rained, it rained, it rained. You see, folks, it wasn't my reputation that was on the line. It was God's <laughs> reputation. For God had said, Whatsoever you shall ask in my name, believing, you shall receive. And if I believe that God is a God of might and miracles, if I believe that there is nothing impossible with God, if I by faith announce that this is the hand of God and the will of God and I'm seeking God, get out of the way. God's going to run over you if he has to and he's going to bring down the power of glory in your life. But you'll never know the wonder of the Lord until you get in a corner with God and you're praying in the power of the Holy Spirit and you watch God then go to work. Got to hurry. The contract. He made a contract with her. He said, do you accept, and this is not in there, but it's, it's intended, by faith. It's a faith experience on the part of Rebecca. She could have turned him down. She could have said, oh, I like the bracelets, but I don't want the other. I don't want to leave home. But he said, will you accept by faith? Everybody that's saved is saved by faith. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So everybody that's saved is saved by faith. And we by, by faith in what? By faith in who Jesus is. He is the Christ, the Son of the living God. The Bible says in Romans chapter 10, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth that Jesus is Lord. He's the Lord of glory. He's the Lord of life. He's the Lord of creation. He's the Lord of salvation. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. So we stand and we say, after these 2,000 years, I believe that what Jesus was doing on Calvary was taking my sin out of the way, nailing it to the cross, paying the price for my sin. It's all according to the plan of God, the wisdom of God, the will of God. And now I come by faith and I proclaim that what Jesus did there is effective in my life today. I announce by faith that he is God, that God raised him from the grave, and the same faith that brought him out of the grave is available to my heart and on the faith on the uh, announcement of my faith, I point my finger in the face of the devil and say, you're done with me. Out of here, devil. I've been bought with a price, saved from my sins and given life everlasting in the Lord. And I'm saved by faith. The Bible says in Hebrews that these people of faith died not having received the promise. And I want you to know I have not seen him yet. Mark the word yet. For John, Jesus said to Thomas, show us the Savior. And Jesus said, here's my hands, look at him. Thomas said, my Lord, my God. He said, blessed are you, Thomas, because you have seen and believe, but blessed are they who having not seen yet believe. And I want you to know that we who are in the body of Christ who have not seen him, we can say hallelujah, thine the glory. Father, I believe and now that I am saved, one of these days I'm going to see you face to face. Yeah. It's just a matter of when God gets ready to bring us in, either through the rapture or through doors of death. Don't make any difference. Going to see the king. Well, Eliezer is a type of the Holy Spirit. Isaac is a type of Jesus, the son waiting for the bride. Rebecca is a type of the church journeying to the bridegroom. Abraham is a type of God the Father waiting with the son for the bride to come. Look at Rebecca just for a moment. The willing saint. Here is one who said, uh, has presented the claims of the master. Are you willing? She said, I am and so I see her as she gathers up her stuff and gets on that camel to begin the trip back home. Now, folks, she had never seen him. She had never met him, yet she loved him. Oh, the day I met Jesus, I loved him. Hadn't seen him, but I loved him. And the more I know about him, the more I love him. Amen. I read the word of God and God speaks to my heart of what Jesus has done for me and it just makes me love him more. Sweeter as the days go by. She loves him 
and has given him her.